In this episode of The Mind Pump, we answer fitness questions, but we also have fun in the introductory portion. This is so where much we fun. talk about current events, studies, we talk about our sponsors, and uh, what's going on in our life. So here's what we talked about in this episode. We start out by talking about how Mind Pump is going mainstream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got lots of people listening We're to the show. We're breaking through, everybody. Now that uh, don't really care about fitness, but they're listening anyway. Yes. Uh, then I talked about the messages I've been getting from construction workers who are getting benefits from using four sigmatic cordyceps. As you know, construction workers t- tend to work outside, either in the blazing heat or the freezing cold. And I've speculated with myself that taking four sigmatic cordyceps helps me with heat and cold acclimation. This is why I think it may improve athletic performance, where these people are messaging me saying it works, which is kind of cool. Now, Four Sigmatic is one of our sponsors. If you go to Four Sigmatic, that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash Mind Pump, and use the code Mind Pump, you will get 15% off at checkout. Then we talked about the movie Willow on Disney+. Plus. Willow was a great movie back in the, I think it was the 90s? Dude, it was the best. Great movie. Make sure you check that out. Uh, Then I talked about the crazy market for mattresses and how some of them are trying to compete with uh, like chili technology. So chili pads go on your mattress and they heat, they can heat up your bed or cool your bed down with water. So you're not getting a bunch of EMF. The perfect temperature. And it will maintain temperatures. Well, mattress companies are now trying to compete, but they can't. Because uh, chili is the best. Yep. Now, we have a discount for chili pads uh, through Mind Pump. So here's what you do. Go to Chili Technology. That's C-H- C-H-I-L-I technology.com forward slash Mind Pump. And use the code on the page to get a massive discount. Then we talked about how we messed up the name Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, the most famous athlete in the world. Who's that guy? Yeah, I was uh, relying on my sports uh, my sports co-host here, and they <laughs> messed up the name, so I did, because I don't know what sports are. Wow, that was embarrassing. Then Justin talked about one of his favorite subjects, fish in particular, combined actually two of his favorite Penis subjects. fish. Penis fish. It's kind of weird. That's oh, the best. Then we talked about football at the movies. Uh, that's that's going to be interesting. We'll see if that makes any money. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first question. This person says, look, I've heard that as you get older, you should use light weight and go higher reps to prevent injury. Is there any truth to that? So we talk all about lifting heavy as you age and whether or not you should stay away from it or utilize it. Next question, this person wants to know how many hours of cardio you can do each week and still see muscle gain. He's probably, if you've listened to our podcast, you know that too much cardio can prevent your muscle, your body from building muscle and getting stronger. So we talk a little bit about the right amount, the right dose. The next question, look, this person wants to know if the following statement is true. Hmm. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's an old fitness statement, but believe it or not- like my dad said that. It's it's one of the most true statements in fitness, and we break that down. And the final question, this person wants to know if we have speculated that there's any bubbles in any industry that we think will be bursting soon. Also, this month- MAPS Aesthetic. This is the aesthetic-focused workout program. Now, what does that mean by aesthetics? Looks. It's all about your looks. So this program is designed to help you shape, sculpt, and build your body how you see fit, like a sculptor. So again, it's an aesthetic-focused program. It's bodybuilder, physique competitor, and bikini competitor inspired. This program is 50% off. It's half off this month only Here's how you get that massive discount. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50, B-L-A-C-K-5-0, no space, for the discount. Man, I'm so happy right now. Why? How how I, happy are you? I went to um, my cousin's house over the weekend, which that's part of the reason why I'm happy. I love them. Good people. Cousin Sepp and his wife, Sarah, and their beautiful children. But anyway, so we're there. We're hanging out, and my cousin, uh, Sarah... She's like, oh, my parents love your podcast. I'm like, what? <laughs> These people are not fitness people at all. Now, they, I'm sure they take care of themselves and all that stuff, but they're obviously older. I'm, I'm not quite sure how old they are, but they're in their, I'm, I'm assuming they're in their 60s, early 60s. They're not fitness fanatics, trainers, anything like that. They listen to the Bishop Barron episodes, and mm. now they listen to Mind Pump, and they love it. You know what that means? What's that? We're reaching 
the people that have been unreachable by the fitness industry. <laughs> Mainstream. At least in your family. Uh, yeah. My, <laughs> <laughs> that's even harder. No bias. Right? I know. I agree. That's even harder. I agree. I agree. I've I had a agree. few of those too, so yeah, yeah I could contribute Bro, to that. family's the hardest per. These are the hardest people to get to listen to your I know. Shit. They're the worst. They're the worst. Yeah. But the fact that the, the here's a like, couple. I know who you really are. Here's a couple who is. Yeah. You're you not know, funny. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah. 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 Screw oh, you, guys. you think you're funny? You're doing yeah. something cool? Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not supporting. No, here are two people. They're, you know, over the age of 55. They're not fitness fanatics. They're not trainers. They're not in the fitness space. And they listen to the podcast um, and they enjoy it. And boy, the hardest thing. Come on, tell me right now. What's the hardest thing for the fitness? Industry to do what's the mo what's the most difficult the thing that they always are trying to do yeah yeah the, to reach the average person to yeah. reach the everyday average person because otherwise they're just trade your tra you know gyms used to call it trading members you know like mm -hmm. well, I sign this person up then they stop and they go to your gym and then you sign them up and then you you know they buy this program they buy that program well it's repulsive to like an average person that has no interest at all because it just seems like you're just trying to get them to do work. You know, like that's the biggest barrier right away is to be like, well, you know, you have to like really pitch them the, the benefits of it and why it's so important, all this stuff. But it's still just like, yeah, unless, unless you get their attention. Oh, somehow. I love it because it means because here's what ends up happening. This is the beauty of it. You're not a fitness fanatic. You're not somebody that's super into working out. You don't work in the fitness space, but you found somebody in the fitness space that is either, I don't whatever, entertaining enough or impactful enough or whatever that you actually enjoy hearing them talk naturally by osmosis you can slowly start to make an impact on that person in a positive way and get them to change behaviors change how they eat change their maybe start to exercise you know start to learn things about fitness why do you think that's possible today and it different than like two decades ago why is that so different you think uh i think it's because in the past that the, the bandwidth was so limited with uh, media mm -hmm. that if you went if you heard fitness information it was very specific fit like you'd have to buy a fitness magazine or a bodybuilding magazine or something like that I think there's so, the bandwidth is so and also to our credit um, I'm gonna pat myself on the back a little more or our <laughs> our backs yeah, um, thanks we've had it over here. we've had guests on the show that um, people would maybe on the outside think has nothing to do with fitness yeah which brings you know because that's how they first listened to our show was Bishop Barron, who, you know, someone would say he has nothing to do with fitness and health, which we know spiritual health definitely contributes to, to you know, to overall health. But here, that you know, people who have nothing to do, want nothing to do with working out, they're not, I don't care too much about it, whatever. They come in and they listen to an episode with him or an episode with a psychologist or an economist or, you know, other guests that we've had that had nothing to do. And then they hear us and then hopefully they like us and then they start listening to more and I think it it's. Works. I think today it's more. I think people are seeking uh, health and fitness more today than two decades ago. And I think two decades ago, if you were, had a gym membership, you were the you know hardcore gym goer. You were into your body and you wanted to get super fit, or maybe you were into sports, and so that's why there was a, a, an ulterior motive there besides just overall health and wellness. I think that most people know now that we suffer from, you know, uh, a chronic obesity, diabetes, cancer. I think more the common person now is way more afraid of the potential harm they could do to themselves because of lack of exercise and poor eating. And so I think more people are just seeking or interested, even if they don't want to. Like, even if you don't really like, I'm not, I don't mm. care about my body. I'm not trying to get ripped. I don't give a shit about that. But I do know that, you know, if I eat poorly and I don't exercise for long term, this could head down where I felt like that wasn't really it two decades ago or more. Just more awareness. Yeah. more. There's so much yeah. more awareness around the importance of exercise and, and eating correctly today than just two decades I think you're, ago. I think you're mm -hmm. right. I think that's a big part. You're right. People are more aware and there's less stigma around different forms of exercise. Um, lifting weights, for example. There's still a stigma around lifting weights, but it's not... not as bad. No. Yeah, nowhere near as bad. Nowhere. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, if a woman said uh, to her husband or to her friends, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about lifting weights, they would go, why? Yeah. Why are you going to lift weights? You're trying to be a bodybuilder? Um, exactly. You don't, you don't hear that as much. So I think you're right. I think 
the the timing is probably right for real. And when I say real fitness and health, what I mean is uh, fitness and health as it applies to everyday average people who are not fanatics, who just right. generally want to improve their lives. Because um, in the past, you're right, it was more so fitness fanatics and, that we're going to see that And then to me, that's really what's wrong with the the message that's coming from, and I know your post that stirred up all that controversy, uh, I think the part that a lot of people are missing of, of your point too is that, you know, for the longest time, uh, these people, even the ones that were giving good advice, right? Even the ones in our space that are giving advice, they're still speaking to uh, an echo, in an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. they're, they're talking to other people that already really want to work out and already are really motivated to train. They're just uh, off the motivation right now and they need some hype or some, they need a, a new study to show doing it a different way is better. You know what I'm saying? To just get re-energized, go back to the gym. They're not the average person. Mm -mm. They're not. They're 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 the, and so the, you have this community in our space uh, between the PhDs, the coaches, the body, the models, the athletes, and they're all talking to each other. They're all and they're all you know what you know creating their own little silos and uh, you know modalities and my way's better than your way, mm -hmm. and yet all fighting over the same what twelve percent mm -hmm. of our yeah. you know twelve and there's, maybe there's, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that if that's what you want to do, but our goal from day one was how do we reach those people that have zero interest? Yeah. They still need to help. Well, they, I, yeah. And I think to, uh, back, back in the day, like people used to like idolize all these like professional athletes. And then they would, there'd be examples of, uh, bodybuilders out there that were just like huge and ripped. And like everybody could recognize that and be impressed by that. But that, it was always like, Oh, well that's for them. You know, there was never really a message just for your average person of like how to lift weights, you know, appropriately and how to have that benefit you from a health perspective. And I think that that's been something that like has really needed to come to the forefront because it just seems like, well, yeah, I, I see all these people on Instagram. They all look awesome. They're all doing this stuff. But it's like, how does that relate to me? Yeah. We're, what we're trying to do is for lack of a, actually, I think this is one of the best terms is fitness and health evangelization. It really is. And, and I'm using that term because that term is yeah. often used with uh, religion. Now, let's, use, let's think of religion for a second. How effective are religious leaders at getting people to walk in their churches, their synagogues, or their, their groups when they beat you over the head with their, yeah. you know— Bible with their, thumping. With, yeah. It doesn't, in fact, it pushes you away. The most effective way to evangelize is to be the example— and be somebody that that person wants to be around, and then it starts to happen. So with fitness evangelization, and I was guilty of this. I'm sure you guys were too. That's what I did. I walked around, and I preached to everybody, and I told them yeah. tons and tons of information. It was super ineffective. Instead, what I try to do now is not only be the example, but be somebody, some, be the kind of person someone wants to be around and hang around and listen to. And so I think we may be doing that well with the podcast. I'm very proud of that. I think that because this is now – these are not only people who I know who are family, but they're not fitness fanatics. And these aren't the first people that I've heard who have started listening to the podcast who otherwise wouldn't seek out. And, and we know what they say to me. I haven't had a chance to talk to her parents, but I've heard this from other people. I, I, you know, I've heard of people say, oh, I, have no, I don't really care about fitness. I just like listening to you guys. I think it's great. I think what you guys talk about is awesome. It's funny or whatever. And I'm thinking in my head, like, you know, I'm kind of like rubbing my hands like the evil laugh. Like, oh, yeah. you just wait. Oh, we're going to fitness gonna, smuggle you. Yeah, we're going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get you, you know. Yeah. But it's fucked. That's what we need to do because, you know, the, the, the health epidemic that we're dealing with is not the, an epidemic that's dealing with the fitness fanatics. The fitness epidemic, the health epidemic is coming from people who- Yeah, want nothing to do with working Nothing out. at all. Yeah, yeah. They want nothing at all to do with it. They and, don't and care. Par and part of the reason why, and, and that there's a big portion of those people, there's a portion of those people that never will and don't give a fuck, and, and th that's a fact. Sure. But there's a large portion of those people that are avoiding it because it just seems so nuanced. Mm -hmm. because it seems, oh my God, I got to be in the gym for an hour every single day and I hammering. I weigh and measure all my food. Yes. And, uh, carry all the shit around. Because everything they've heard is coming from the people who are communicating to fitness fanatics. Right. That's the wrong information. Right. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm somebody who is just stuck in my own bubble, don't care about that kind of stuff, I'm busy, I got kids, I got a job, I'm stressed out, and whatever, and I'm in the stage of unconscious incompetence, literally meaning I don't know what I don't know, which is where most of these people are, and then I hear that message, you know what that's going to do to me? It's going to confirm my false beliefs. Right. That's not for me. 
Yeah, right. that's none of that that's, is for me. That's for them totally. So when I heard that, and I don't know if my cousin realized how happy that made me to hear that. Yeah. yeah. But when she said that, I was like, Oh yes, You're making progress. We're working. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so more interesting stuff, right? So you will never believe the the group of people that I'm getting tons of DMs on on one of the products that we promote. It's somebody, a group of people you wouldn't even consider. Well, first give me the product and then I can. Hippies. Yeah. Okay. So, Cordyceps from Four Sigmatic. Okay. So, who do you think is DMing me like crazy? Computer engineers. No. No, no, Bodybuilders. No, no, no. What, what I, the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. That's a yeah. stupid guess. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying I would, I'm trying to go outside my okay, thought. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. No, fair so enough. you, you yeah. guys know how I, I speculated that- Fighter pilots. That, no. So you guys are done. Oh, we've had them reach. Yeah, out. you're done yeah, guessing. Was, they okay, lost all your fine. guessing. Fine. <laughs> oh, you got two. Jeez. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're okay. So, you're so okay. far off. So just look up at the notes that Doug read up there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you guys you know, know I, how I, you know I can't read. Yeah, I, you know how I speculated too far. that um, cordyceps helps with uh, temperature acclimation. Remember, I told you I would take cordyceps. I'd go to the gym. I'd do the steam room and the sauna, and mm -hmm. I just noticed I could last way longer. Yeah. Um, and I also noticed this with cold showers. I just seem to be able to stay in there longer. I feel like this is part of the reason why cordyceps improves performance because one of the ways that – and why it's in, it's it's mostly endurance that I notice or stamina because, you know, as you guys work, start working out and you start to heat up or whatever, uh, that saps your energy or whatever. So yeah. I'm like, I wonder if that's one of the main ways it impacts performance. I looked up studies. There were some studies that kind of pointed in that direction, but I haven't seen anything specific. But this is what I've experienced. It's like I take cordyceps. And I could just handle heat. And I can handle core, uh, cold much better. So I talked about it on the podcast a couple times. I've gotten at least 15 DMs from construction workers. Oh, really? Really? Cons yes. Being out uh, in the sun all day long? They're not even using it to work out. Yeah, they're just using it being in the sun all day in long. In the sun or the cold. Yeah. And they're like, dude, I'm outside in the beating dude, sun. I remember that. And I could just work. I the could just frost in the morning. You're freezing your hands off, everything. And then it gets hot, you know, midday. Yes. So that's crazy. Yeah. So of all the people. Was it you that was telling me that you used to throw the burrito on the dashboard? Yeah, dude, dashboard burritos. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to any of the construction workers with that method. Oh, yeah, God, totally, remember, it's good. I remember going to work with my dad. And, you know, here, I'm 14 years old. So my job is to fucking wash the tools every time they get, you know, the mud on them or whatever. That's a, that's a word for... Uh, Tool washer. Yeah. That's and so I'd go outside in a freezing-ass morning in San Francisco when we'd be doing jobs up there, and I'd have to go outside and spray off the trowel and shit with the hose. Oh, yeah. My fucking <laughs> hands <laughs> That's the worst. And I was, that's what I decided right there. Yeah. I hate this yeah, shit. This isn't for me. Yeah. yeah I want to talk for a living. I don't want to move my body for a living. Yeah. Super, super, super hard. Anyway. Dude, uh, it, the, the cordyceps thing. I was watching like um, some of these documentaries and watching how, like you know, the ants and like... Like a couple of these other insects, how the cordyceps actually take them over and they, they become like zombies. That's how they. That's how it works. What? So, so caterpillar, cal caterpillars. Wait, 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 back up. Explain that. You it's just, a fungus. So it's a fungus that like takes over these insects and the actually, cordyceps like, goes all the way up. Yeah, to to their brain and like like takes over. It, it's a it's a parasitic. It's so parasite. weird. Yeah, it's a parasitic uh, fungus. But somehow it benefits us. This is what I'm trying to get at. Like, how does that, like, like what, what is the the relation there? It literally so where do kills they them and grows it out. out okay, of so that's where the, they harvest it from. That. So I, I don't know if they har I don't know harvest if it's the same kind either. No, it is. Is it? Yeah, but okay. I don't. I don't think that's where they're harvesting it from. I don't think they have a bunch of caterpillars that they. <laughs> but that's what they. That's, <laughs> that's what, it does. what I'm wondering. Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. what it does though. That's yeah. really interesting. Yes. Why? But, why caterpillars? Do you know? I mean, oh, well, you have I, to ask fucking. Yeah, I don't know. You got to watch creator it. of all the stuff. Yeah, where did yeah, you see that? I have no that? idea. Where did you see that? It was just on a nature documentary. It was, they were like somewhere, uh, I don't know if it was a rainforest, but there was like this this colony of ants and then one of them got like a, a cordyceps that took over and like made its way to the highest uh, position there to where uh, I think a bird yep. came down and then like and ate it. And so that way it was able to then spread it further uh, you know, through Bro, its it, dung. It influences the, the the ant, the insect, to climb to the to highest yeah. peak or whatever. It so can. it's very visible for a bird to come and, eat it, and then sit there and attract a bird to eat it, so that it can get spread. Oh, fuck this. Yeah, fuck this. nature's total, crazy, dude. Total zombie. That is crazy. Have you seen? Uh, have you watched the nature? Uh, um, the nature, not Nature Channel, but I forget what they Mad call Geo it. Or whatever? No, 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 no. It's uh, it's Disney's version on Disney Plus. Oh yeah, the, have you watched the nature one? What they do? So it's just like uh, what are the fucking favorite ones that like we all, Planet Earth, yeah, like Planet like Earth or whatever. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they 
they narrate it and they tell a story. So it's very Disney esque, oh. right? So instead of just like watch, like yeah, you know, when kids you, watch when it. you watch Planet Earth or one of the Nat Geo ones, right? You you're watching it and it's uh, feels very educational, mm-hmm. right? It's just it, they just where they they tell a story. They give the names to the animals, but then they're still they're educating at the same time. It's brilliant, bro. Oh, dude. So I Absolutely went brilliant. through like Disney Plus, so now they've added all the old. Uh, movies in in cartoon movies and everything else. I'm so excited because now you have like this, uh, you know, more more options. And so we actually saw Willow was one of the options. Bro, I used to love that movie. Dude. Now, is it as good as it was when we were younger? Okay, so there's a lot of them. Like you, you go back, you watch like Never Ending Story. You watch them, you're kind of like, oh, this yeah. is not. Dude, Willow holds up. Oh, good. Will, and I guess like George Lucas actually wrote uh, you know the the script and like uh, was part of the production of it. I think Ron Howard might have uh, been the director. But that was one of my favorite movies when I was growing up. Dude, it was great. Yeah. It was it, and it was it was funny because you know why it was great was because they didn't use like barely any CGI. I mean, it was kind of cheesy. Like any any of the CGI's they used, you know, they had like a background screen. You could tell it was like you know like a shot ahead of time and they're in front of it, kind of a thing. But everybody was in see, costume. You couldn't see that just ten years ago. No, now you can t- tell. TVs are so clear now. Yeah, it gives away. You can totally all that. tell. It's not just that, but you're so used to it, whole different quality that you look back and you're like, yeah. "Oh, this is." But remember, it, do you guys ever watch Jason and the Argonauts, the the old one? Yeah, it kind of has that weird, like clunky. It's all claymation, claymation you know, monsters and shit. Feel, when yeah. I first watched that as a kid, I was like, "Oh my!" The, the dragon in it, that the troll that turns into a dragon, kind of yeah. had that feel. But it was just funny because it, it had all these lines in there that are hilarious. My kids were dying, and uh, it, it made me think of how, like, remember, like the conversation we had about like, how it nicknames for our friends that were fucked up yeah <laughs> so we had one guy in our group that was like shorter than everybody else and so we, we called him ben the peck oh <laughs> like what dicks <laughs> i was like i feel so bad about that now you know like like in the in the movie he keeps calling him peck because they're like you know the small people like like basically oh that's so fucked up oh dude i'm it, sure that's where the nickname came from too right i'm sure well yeah, yeah that's where well, it came from. yeah yeah, but anyway, yeah, it was like totally derogatory, you know, and I'm like calling this this poor kid in, in, in elementary school a peck, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, what a dick. Yeah, and you guys were friends. Yeah, we were friends, yeah. but he loved it. Yeah. yeah, he was like. Or he made you think he loved he, it. He, I love went, it, guys. Went home and cried. Goes home and cries about it. That's terrible. Just like dude, we all did. Hey, I watched Disney Plus over the weekend also, and I watched one of those nature shows that you were talking about. Oh, you did? And this one wasn't narrated, I don't think, uh, but it was the most fucked up nature show I've ever seen in my entire life. Ever. Well, why? For, well, first off, it opened with something really cool. There was a snow leopard that was uh, hunting a mountain goat, I think it was. Uh, and the snow leopard jumps across a ravine, okay, tackles the, the goat, and then they both tumble down the mountain and die. But they fall and fall and fall and dead. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, the snow leopard dang. took a chance and they both died. Then they brought then the next scene was were these birds that were on the top of the same mountain. I don't remember. I think it was the Himalayas. It might have been the Himalayas. They're on the top of this huge mountain or whatever. Yeah. And the little chicks are like, you know, just growing or whatever. And it's time to fucking leave. It's time to leave the the nest or whatever. So these little chicks are fucked up. They have little wings that barely don't even work. And they just jump off the cliff. And the camera <laughs> follows them. No. Just fall. And you see the little chick like, ah, uh. trying to flap its wings. But it can't fly. Boom, boom, hits the rocks. Boom, boom, keeps falling down. Dead. Dude, it is a cruel reality. Then the next one. Is that Disney? Disney. Then the next one (laughs) does the same thing. He just watched his brother fall to his death. The next one does the same thing. I can do it. Bro, five chicks. Five chicks. And the camera's following them fall down the fucking mountain. You see their little heads get smashed. This is really on Disney? Yes, dude. Then then it gets to the sixth one. And for whatever reason, the sixth one smashes all the way down the mountain and survives. And that's the one that lived. I'm like, that's fucked up. Wow. That's a, that's a fucked up story right yeah, there. Yeah, that is. <laughs> what were you, are you sure that's on Disney? 100%. 100%. You don't remember I mean, it was- it's, it's, it's real life. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, didn't they, couldn't they evolve a better way to like, <laughs> I guess what they did is they evolved like one out of six chances. Whichever, or, yeah. Whichever one survives yeah. is uh, strong enough. They literally just followed it. Just bing off the rock. Bing, bing. And you're just, and it's a little chick. You I know? saw that with like elephant seals where they like made their way to high ground and there was this like huge cliff and like just to get space, they kept knocking off like all these other ones. And you'd see these huge blobs of fat just, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> just like, it was horrific. You guys follow that page on Instagram, Nature is Metal? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's oh, just, oh, Justin. Oh, it's one of my that favorite. Dude. It's always showing fucked up shit. Show it to all your vegan friends. Dude, it's hey, pretty, <laughs> such a dick. pretty Ma- horrible. Yeah. Nature's not thing cool. to do. Yeah. Anyway, I was talking to my brother, um, and uh, my brother is like Mister. I don't know what you want to call him. He researches the fuck out of anything that he buys because he's always trying to save. You know, five dollars doesn't matter. And I appreciate that about him. In fact, I'll ask him about products. And I'll say, hey, what do you think about this? Because I know the guy has gone through and done hours of research to find the best value, the best deal, whatever. So I was telling him about the the chili pad. because So he's got this girlfriend that just started uh, kind of living with him and they're going to find a new apartment. And he, my brother's a heater and she, you know, gets too hot sleeping next to him or whatever. So they're trying to figure So I'm like, dude, get the chili pad. You can control the temperature. You can heat one side up. You can cool the other side up and, you know, whatever. So he's like, oh, he's like, oh yeah, I'll look into it. So this kid, dude, and I'm telling him already, I'm like, this is the best. Trust me, yeah. we, this is why we work with them. They're the best. Fuck, this guy's been researching for like a week, and he's. <laughs> but you know what though? I didn't realize that there's that the mattress market is trying to respond to products like the Chili Pad because they have they have uh, uh, changed the market. They've disrupted the market so much. What are they trying to build it into like the mattresses? Mattress companies are trying to figure out ways to include it because, and Mm. you think about it, if you're a mattress company and you see this other company, you just start to take off. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, this may be a way. Yeah, well, you're too late. I didn't realize the mattress market was so insanely competitive. Oh, Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, And big money, too. Huge money. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. So he's showing me all the different things and he ended up saying that the best value, which is what I told him, which makes me annoyed, but whatever, take all the time in the world. The best value was to get a really good mattress and then throw a chili pad on it. Yeah. It's the best. That's the best. Way I to mean, do it. is it is it really a stereotype? I don't know one uh, girl that like wasn't like freezing at night while the you know if the guy sleeping next to her is like really hot. It's like I, that's just like seems to be always the case because even for me and Courtney, she's like freezing so. Now in the winter, she uses it. Like I, she's using it just to heat up. I'm yeah. like, I'm good. I'm like cracking the window. You're it's extreme. Perfect. You're pretty extreme though. You and Adam are just silly. Yeah, I mean, there's there's extremes <laughs> well, of it, but I think for a lot the of most muscle, generally, yeah, maybe huh? that's a lot it, of muscle. Like, yeah, it could be yeah. good mass. <laughs> could, be, could, be, could be muscle. Just, could be just ins- impressive mass. insulating body fat. Yeah, <laughs> could be uh, <laughs> some of that weaved in there. You know? It's yeah. like the you know, it's yeah, like, Justin and I. We go straight for the AC as soon as we get into the hotel room. Uh, yeah, man. I know. We drop dude. it all the way to the floor. And you guys both snore each other to sleep, apparently too. I don't. You know, I'm hit and miss on that. Like, did I snore? I'm on my back. Like, you and I were just maybe. you and I were just together. Yeah, you snore. Oh, I did. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. don't snore, you breathe like Darth Vader. So you might not be. <gasps> yeah, you might not be snoring. But I'm like, dude, we need to we need to open yeah. up that airway. There's really? Shit yeah. there. uh, yeah, it does happen. That's yeah. weird. I, Katrina says I don't, but maybe she's lying to me. You know? Yeah. Maybe yeah. Cor- Courtney snores, so you know she she's tried to throw me under the bus, and I I caught her on record. Did you know you did? <laughs> <laughs> did you do, bro? I had to. Yeah, I did because she kept making fun of me. I'm like, dude, look, you snore. Like, don't, I'm not the only one here. <laughs> so you recorded it? Yeah, I recorded played it back. She was so mad. That's Speaking hilarious. of getting made fun of, that we, I, we, ha- I must have got, I'm sure you guys did too, if I got a, at least a handful of these DMs about uh, Ronaldo's uh, first name. Yeah, it's Cristiano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking the sports guys. What the sports that, guys? Oh, it's so- I, we're talking about soccer. I yeah. said it wrong. Oh, yeah. oh, that doesn't count. Oops, doesn't count. <laughs> we don't care about that here. Yeah, I said I said it wrong because of you guys. Oh, uh, okay. I see. You, you said that. it wrong first, and you're my authority <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on authority sports. Of sports. You know what I'm saying? Listen, if you quote a study wrong, you can blame it on me. Okay. I fair. mean, it might as well be cricket to me. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's as a much big, as I know about soccer. There's a big difference between Christian but, Ronaldo yeah. and Cristiano. Is it really? It's kind of the same. He's only one of the highest paid athletes I ever. No, he's uh, the he's, most famous he's athlete. He's the, the most famous right. guy like, <laughs> right now. That's funny. He was thinking about coming on the show. No, he's like, no. You get my name right. Right. He's like, fuck those guys. Yeah, forget anyway. it. Do you guys? What was that that news article about the penis fish? Yeah, dude. So up in Nor- like some beach up in Northern California, like there was just littered with all of these like worms that looks just like flesh, fleshy penises. Yeah. What? Like all over the you beach. Seen these? <laughs> no, yeah. I've not seen. I this. guess this Doug. has happened too in Moss Landing and like locally around here. Like there was a big storm that came through and like just brushed up all of these. How did you, you guys worms see a meme? everywhere? And it just so happened to bring it near yeah. the San Francisco area yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, like oh, sweet irony. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. those are weird. Yeah, yeah they're people, just they're fleshy colored and everything. People on the beach. Yeah, yeah, there was there were millions that washed up. Just a shore. bunch of excited yeah. people just running to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> hours later they were all gone. It was yeah, really yeah. Th- this is weird. Yeah, it looks like a. Oh yeah, it looks straight up like a. It's a fish. Yeah, it it, looks, well, they they call it a fish, but yeah, it's like a, a worm. Bro, how funny! So let's just be let's straight up. Let, we're let's say we're fifteen year old friends. We're on the beach. Yeah. You find one of these. Uh, yeah. You're for sure throwing it at your friend's face. One hundred percent. For sure, you're slapping your friend in the face with this thing. I'm putting it on somebody's chair at school. How did I? How did <laughs> yeah. I miss this? This is hilarious. Yeah, you, you're always up and up on the penis shaped stuff. So I'm yeah, surprised. I, that no, you're that's fine. that's Justin. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's I just Justin. draw it. Uh, yeah. I, I so I got a, I uh, my cousin shared this article. I'm in his group thread with. Like all my cousins, and they always share the weird shit. And so they sh- they shared this article. Yeah. And so I, they always they look to me to like, what is that? You know. So yeah. I made up the story. So I'm like, oh, this is fucking crazy. I'm like, that fish. It's a parasitic fish. If you're swimming in the ocean without like swim trucks, and it gets, it'll it, enter you. It actually goes yeah. inside yeah. your penis. <laughs> and oh, that's why. The, oh wow. Yeah, it goes in. My cousin freaked out, dude. <laughs> that's why I don't go in the water. I fucking told you guys. <laughs> <Just go in. laughs> That's There's why, invaders in there. That's why I never go in there. Dude, you're abusing your privileges as ambassador of health. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you guys we're going to have to take that sweat, sweater back. Yeah. I want a hat. Yeah. I don't want a sweater. Yeah. I want like a... <laughs> like I still a, want you like a sash. Like it's, you know, like you want it. No, I want a big... Yeah, that's a sash and a big, like a fuck weird looking hat, you know? Hey, uh, did, yeah. you, like did you hat. see in the forum somebody posted the, uh, shared the movie, the football and football at the theaters? Which I talked about. I think I talked about this a couple of years ago. You did predict this. Uh huh. You did. So, so where you could watch a game at the movies. Yeah. So everyone's uh. and you get they do this thing which is pretty smart, right? Where uh, you you pay your ticket and then it gives you you know X amount of dollars towards popcorn and soda and everything like that. That's an all day long thing too, by the way. Like wow. you, football starts ten in the morning, doesn't end till oh my gosh. six o'clock at night. You so, know what this sounds to me? So so smart by part, them. Part of me is that like is stupid. Smart. Who's gonna go there? And then I just thought to myself, all the husbands, like all the bros, all the husbands out there who are like, ah, oh, honey, uh, I guess today's you know today's football day. I'm gonna be at the theater with one hundred percent with Fred all day. Yeah, for sure. I put in the schedule. You didn't look at the schedule. <laughs> it's right there. It's been in there for three uh, weeks. It's... Anyway. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in there. I, no, I, I can't. So I, I was looking it up, and there, you know, it tells you what theaters uh, that's doing it. And we, the, there's one in San Jose. I, I think it's something they're like testing right now. I don't yeah. think this has been going for very long, and I think they've scheduled out. So they also do um, fights. They've already been doing. Yeah, fights. I've seen that for a while. And cool. they also do. Uh, op- I love that they do opera and uh, other type of art uh, performances. So you could go to the you could go to the theater and watch uh, like the symphony or ballet or opera. I, I I think the movie theaters are really trying to figure out a way to pivot because yeah. uh, their home entertainment systems well, and access and, is just and now okay. So I, I I still have yet to read an article that that explains this more, but I knew this was happening, and that was I've seen more and more movies hit the theater. And then the turnaround for it to be streaming is way faster. Yeah. It used to be six months. Yeah. It used to be a six. No, if you right. saw a movie in the theater, you could you wouldn't be able to see it for six months later until it hit video cassette or whatever. It's because they're. It's because you know what it is. If it really boils down to this, the movie theater forever used to be the middleman. They used to be the middleman that delivered the product for a long time. You didn't have TV in your house, so if you wanted to watch anything, you had to go to the theater. And then the way that they maintained that that middleman, uh, you know, position was the atmosphere, the quality of the sound. The, and then the way well, they maintained it was that you, that's how you got a movie first. Yes. But movies make a lot of money now through streaming and stuff it's like that. It's interesting, too. There's uh, So Jay and Silent Bob, you know, like that whole movie franchise and everything. Like So I guess they've like did did a reboot and, and shot a movie, but like planned it out as an event thing. So they got like, we're going to be at this location, at this, you know, city, and it's going to be in this theater. And so they did it like as like a tour. So that way, like people would show up and then they did like a Q&A at the end of the, the of the film uh, and they'd show the film. And so they, they'd get all these like ticket sales that way. Uh, and then they just toured around and I guess they're going to release the full thing eventually. But that was like their their plan, which so was the, interesting. So, OK, wait, let me get this straight. So they, they're going around almost like a comedian tours. Yes. And doing live shows. Yeah. But also recording that whole process. So they so they're watching the movie. They're sitting in there watching the movie with the fans that are watching the movie. Then afterwards, what movie though? They have a kid, Jane, Silent Bob, a new one. Yeah, new one. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, that's interesting. Mm. And then they yeah, plan Kevin to, Smith, uh, yeah, the guy. And that and then they plan to shoot all of that content and then No, re- they're just doing a live they they made a live event out of it. So people buy tickets to go watch the movie, but then they have a Q and A at the end. Oh, and I get, then they okay, tour to the next city. And, okay, I get it. I yeah. get it. To make sure that this thing sells out every time. Like if you yeah. show up for a live exactly. event, you get to see the actual actors, and you're going to go watch the movie. So they're not like, doing like a broad. Like, I like it's it. Going to yeah. be in all theaters at That's once. Thing. Really smart. It's like, actually, boom, boom, boom. Wow. What if uh, this starts to spread? You see actors doing this. That'd be cool. Like, like I mean, book they're there. Like as, as you're watching the movie at the end, you can kind of hang out with yeah. them. It's kind of cool. That makes sense. Uh, especially Jay, uh, that mo- that movie. It's called Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, that one has a cult, a uh, bit of a cult. Yeah, it is totally more the cult classic. Yeah. So there's certain movies that do that, right? Like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Well, and, that it makes yeah, that it makes sense fun. for independent films. If you're a film, if you're not like mainstream, that because it does that doesn't make sense for Tom Cruise to come down and do that after Mission Impossible Thirty. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like it yeah. doesn't make sense for him to. <laughs> Is that the next one? <laughs> well, He's probably at the 60. Yeah, I don't point. know. There's yeah. fucking Mission so many of them. I don't 65. even know how many they yeah. have. They just keep things. milking the but shit it, out of that He's account. killing it, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's doing But I mean, it job. doesn't make sense, right, for him to come down and do that to, to try and hustle tickets. But if you're someone who's like, I mean, if, if someone like us made a movie, we'd have to do something like that, right? We'd have to cater to our audience, go to like our live events, and then you release it. Oh, hope, that's hope, a good idea. Yeah, no. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll make Mind Pump a movie. Stupid. <laughs> anyway, most boring movie ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. Our first question is from Hands Mamas New York. Hands My and mamas. head trainer states that as you get older, you should use a lighter weight and higher reps to help prevent injury from going too heavy. Is there any truth to that? I think there's a little bit of truth to it. Um, it's not entirely true. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, it all boils down to the individual. But the truth that there, that this statement contains really has to do more with the risk factors associated right. with lifting heavy. The heavier you lift, the more, you know, when you're training the low rep ranges, just because you're handling heavier weight, the risk of injury can be higher um, in regards to poor form. So if your form is off by a little bit and you're using light weight, the risk of injury is lower than if your form is off a little bit with heavy weight for obvious reasons, right? If I'm overhead pressing a weight that I can only do five reps with and my form goes off a little bit, the compensation that I'm that's needed to correct my form and right in the in the in the moment, I think is for, much much higher. I think for when you first uh, like start with a, an older client, I think this is really good advice. Like if you like, so let's say someone comes in and they're uh, you know sixty years old and never really weight trained. Uh, I might train this way for quite a while to get the reps, the practice, you know, because I don't want to take that much risk. Uh, although I know that eventually getting them to where I'm li- making them lift heavy, heavy enough to where it's challenging for five reps is going to be extremely beneficial. So while they're getting there, but if I had a client who hires me and they're, you know, 60, but they've been weight training for five years this way, light lightweight. They've probably put a lot of practice. They probably squat pretty decent. They probably shoulder press pretty de- de- decent because if they've been doing it for five years and high repetitions, they've got a lot of practice of those movements. And then I would feel a lot safer with progressing them to heavier weight, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, the, 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 the operative term here is um, appropriate, okay? So yeah. should older people not do any – you know, agility training at all because agility training is higher risk. Well, no, they just have to do appropriate agility training. That may look like, you know, hopping in place a little bit. So heavy weight, low reps as a trainer, form has got to be perfect and it has to be appropriate uh, to the client because here's the benefits of lifting heavy. Obviously, if it's a new way of lifting for the person, they're going to build more muscle, gain more strength, but there's also a skill involved with lifting uh, a weight that's heavy, you have to learn how to summon that kind of strength. And there's a lot of beneficial carryover, but it has to be done appropriately. So I think when anytime you're training someone who's older, you have to place special care on being maybe a little bit more meticulous about perfect form and listening to their body. You know, So if I'm training a 20-year-old and they're telling me like, ah, my, my hip felt a little funny after last week's squat, I'm going to treat that differently than if my 65-year-old client, you know, says that. My 65-year-old client says that, I'm going to err way more on the side of safety than with somebody who's, you know, 20 years old or whatever. 
So appropriate is the is the key term here. Absolutely, and I I totally agree with all that. I think um, if we're going into aging, if we're like looking at somebody that's like prepping towards, you know, how can I sort of slow down the aging process and look more towards? Obviously, strength is one of those things that we're gonna you know highlight is is the utmost importance. One thing I've been convinced of lately, even more so, is you know the, the need and the necessity for fast twitch uh, type movements and to be able to maintain and sustain uh, that uh, ability, uh, mainly because, you know, these quick uh, reactive type movements are things in real life. Like these are things that have the most potential for injuries like to occur. And so uh, to be able to maintain just that uh, ability and to, to the appropriate amount, just like you said, Sal, like it, like it could just look like I'm kind of hopping in place. It could look like, you know, a very controlled, uh, you know, light kettlebell, but I'm getting that like snap. I'm, I'm expressing that that fast twitch movement, but it's something that I really do need to maintain, uh, you know, within everything else, yeah, yeah, strength wise. Yeah. When I've when I've trained older people who are rehabbing um, an injury, oftentimes, more often than not, the injury came from like, uh, oh, I was in the shower, I slipped a little bit, didn't fall, but I had to catch myself. Boom, yep. pulled a muscle or tore something, or I I was dropping something and I went down to grab it real quick. And I hurt myself. Well, this is also why I think uh, stability training, stability training, became so popular too. Mm -hmm. Was for this because when when that started coming, when all the studies around the benefits of that started coming out, this is where I think it was most applicable as far as what clients you were training, right? The type of client that this would benefit me. I remember doing stuff where I, they would be standing on both feet, just hop just to to the side laterally. You know, and then stabilize on one foot, right. then hop to the other side, mm -hmm. and then something that is so basic and simple like that it could be huge for a client like this that we're, we're talking about so i i under when like someone who gives this like advice as a head trainer who's probably i'm, I'm always trying to put myself in their their shoes and if i'm telling my staff this i might be telling my staff that because i'm cautioning them like i might have seen two or three of my trainers squatting with their new client like yeah. heavy load and their form was off and terrible and so i'm like trying to correct you and say hey you need to do lighter weight, more reps, more practice with this client before you go load her with 130 pounds on her back and try and do a barbell squat. Like she's just not, the, the prerequisites aren't there for that person. So I give a general statement like this. I see the value in that. I see the value of not as, you know, when you're managing a team or a staff of people of giving something, a general topic like that. But the truth is we, we want to train and work any client, no matter what age they are, to a place where they can do strength training. And that to them, like I have a client right now who's in her fifties and you know, just the bar, 45 pounds on her back. That's challenging for five reps, controlled, mm -hmm. slow and deep and like focusing on that's really challenging. Totally. I mean, she could do body weight squats till she's blue in the face. But as soon as I load it with about 45 pounds on her back and she's got to stabilize that bar and we're, we're barefoot and, and, and focusing on the way we're staying on the man, that's and slowing the tempo down. I can make those five reps in, incredibly intense for her. Yeah. One of the biggest lessons you'll learn or I learned as a trainer um, was what appropriate actually meant. You know, it could literally be oftentimes, and this is, you know, later on in my career when I started training people at advanced age, I could be training someone and today's leg workout is you sitting down in a chair and standing up. Yeah. That's, their, that's your squats for today. But I remember as a new trainer, I would see something like that and be like, oh, that's not enough. You're wasting your time. We need to put you on the leg press. We need to get you to really feel sore and whatever. No, no, no. Really appropriate is that's the thing you got to focus on. And what is appropriate for this person? If this person is older and deconditioned or they're only used to one way of training, you just move two degrees over to another direction and that's it. That's enough. There's no need for you to go any further. And what you think is not enough is probably enough. Oftentimes, this took me so long to really appreciate and figure out. Once I got to this point, I became so effective at training people in this age category because I really started to appreciate what that meant. What is what does appropriate mean? Well, that means today, you know, I, uh, you know, you know, one of my fir the first exercise I would do with someone in this age group is we'd sit on a bench, and I wouldn't have them stand up and sit down. In fact, one of the first things I'd have them do is a leg extension with no weight, one leg. They'd sit there, lift their knee up, and just extend their leg and come down. And they'd come back to me the next day and be like, "Oh, I was a little sore." Yeah, yeah. you know, so. Always err on that side, and you should be okay. It, it, but here's the deal. Heavy weight, perfect form is even more important than it is with lightweight. So that's why there's some truth to what this, uh, you know, this question. 
Next question is from Finlay Ched. How many hours of cardio can you do each week and still see muscle gain? This is a, I, I like this question because um, there's definitely a lot. There's a lot of depends going on here, right? Uh, the people here on the show a lot, lots of poopy diapers. <laughs> let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about cardio, and uh, it sounds like we're just none of us are fans. It's oh, it's just not the best, and and I think a lot of that message is because it, it in the seventies and eighties. It was it was what everyone did for exercise. Like nobody was really strength training or lifting weights except for this small niche group. And so we're trying to counter that message as it's definitely not the best form of exercise to be healthy, to be strong for longevity. There's a much better approach than doing cardio. That doesn't mean that the cardio doesn't have incredible benefits. But the other reason why we also talk that way is it's also one of the it's challenging when you're doing a lot of cardio and you're also have a goal of wanting to build muscle because cardio in itself is catabolic and trying to build muscle would be anabolic. So it's really tough to ask your body to do two things at the same time. You can, if you're eating a sufficient amount of calories, this is possible. But at the end of the day, if you're doing tons of hours and hours of cardio, you're, you're telling your body that it, it to be efficient and to be efficient at running a cardio, it's not wanting to add a bunch of muscle. So there's a sweet spot for every single person, and that's going to depend on each individual. Cardio can actually help you build muscle too. Um, if you're if the cardio that you're doing is is optimizing your health, then it can actually help you build muscle. I remember experiencing this as a young lifter, where I was I was allergic to cardio. I little I did zero because I at that point understood you know the basics, which was I need more calories than I burn. Um, I want to build muscle, and so my idea was I'm going to lift weights and then burn no calories for the rest of the day. And, and you know, God forbid I did any additional movement, and definitely was not going to do cardio because I'm not going to burn those precious calories that my muscles need. That's what I believed. And I remember you know working with a trainer who you know was just just incredible muscle development and strong. And I saw him doing occasional cardio, low intensity, but he'd get on the treadmill and walk uphill, or he'd do an elliptical. And I remember thinking. And I asked him, I said, well, man, you build a ton of muscle and you still do cardio. I can't imagine how much muscle you build if you didn't do cardio. And he's like, I'd build less. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I goes, when I didn't do any cardio, I was unhealthy. I had zero cardiovascular endurance and it actually ham- it actually took away from my ability to work out. I couldn't do as many squats and I just didn't feel as healthy. So now I do it just to maintain and keep my health and it actually helps me build muscle. So I did the same thing and I noticed the same thing. So how many hours of cardio can you do each week and still see muscle gain? Uh, you can actually maximize muscle gain if the cardio you're doing is optimizing your health. If you're not training to maximize endurance, if you're not training to maximize stamina. You're not, in other words, cardio isn't the focus of your workout. You're not trying mm-hmm. to just get awesome at cardio, but you're doing it as a way to maintain your health. Same, same. By the way, this is the same thing for like, you know, stretching, like or yoga or. <laughs> That type of stuff. Can that take away from muscle gain? It can. Can it also contribute? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you use cardio as a way to help you lift weights more effectively and to optimize your health, it will actually build more well, muscle. With, I saw some some significant muscle growth uh, going through sprints with definite like elongated rest periods in between, mm-hmm. uh, which you know a lot of people wouldn't really look at that as very cardiovascular, very anaerobic. But uh, I mean in terms of like me getting the benefits of that and using, you know, sprints, uh, to build, you know, muscle in my legs, it, it definitely like, uh, was, was pretty, pretty apparent. Oh dude, you know, here's a funny thing. You ever hear, uh, uh, strength athletes who train with bodybuilders and then they finish the session. They're like, I can barely breathe. Yeah. Super sets, high rep sets, you know, that, that's cardio. Exactly. Yeah. That's a form of re- resistance training cardio. That's right. So if I was, if I were to program this where uh, I want to do cardio, and I also want to build muscle, it would look more like the 12 to, to 25 to 30 minute bouts. And it would be like what Justin said, it would be a more hit type of style where it'd be, I would push really hard. Then I would let my heart rate could recover completely. I would push really hard, let my heart rate recover. You're going to get the, the benefits of the cardio as far as strengthening your heart mm-hmm. uh, by exercising that way, which would then carry over into your, uh, into your lifting routine. And you're not doing so high in high endurance uh, for longer, long bouts, which then is going to tell your body to pare down muscle. Sure. It doesn't need. So if I were to program cardio, and my main goal was still to be weight loss. They, I would do it, and I do this. This is how I would get ready for shows. I would eventually do cardio. I just wouldn't want to do a lot of it when I'm trying to build, right? Mm-hmm. 
uh, I would do it more towards cuts. And then when I introduce it, it's the same way that I would introduce it to somebody who's got this question yeah. is 12 minute bouts of hit post workout first. That's how I started off for three days a week. And then it goes to four days a week. Then it goes to five days a week. Then 12 minutes turns into 15 minutes, 15 minutes turns into 20, then eventually 30. And man, you'll, you'll be in great cardiovascular shape. You'll mostly burn body fat by doing that and as long as you're eating adequate calories uh, you still should be able to build muscle but all, you know I, I, but even with that it depends like if you have right. the, if you have the person who hit cardio is too much of a stress walking on the treadmill for 20 minutes might be enough of a stress relief depending on how they do it mm -hmm. that will actually contribute uh, to muscle gain you know the question the answer was open adam opened it with it depends it's totally true this is an impossible question to answer definitively because it depends who I'm talking to. Right. Um, and it, for some, for someone, uh, the right answer may be the exact wrong answer right. for somebody else. Totally. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the, 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 this is more kind of a general answer that I think can apply to most people. If your cardio is optimizing your health and the goal isn't to just become gain tons of you know, stamina and endurance, it's probably going to benefit you and not take away, I would say, from, from muscle gain. Next question is from I Hate Matt Vincent. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? Yeah. I think no. he, was, he was trying to be funny here, but it's true. It's a, This no. is one of the oldest lines in the fitness industry, isn't it? Well, oh, didn't, I, yeah. didn't I bring this up on the, one of the most recent episodes where I kind of freaked out when I jumped out of my truck? Did oh, I, yeah. Did I bring that up on the show? Yeah. Did I talk about the show or was I just talking to you guys? I can't remember. No, you brought it up. Yeah. because yeah, And that's a perfect example of... Um, you know, it had just been a while since I had done any jump boxes or anything like that. And just out of habit, uh, being in the back of a lifted pickup truck and then jumping out, it's, you know, seemed like no big deal to me. But when I landed, boy, it felt mm -hmm. way different than it had felt the last time I had done that. And I know that's because I haven't done it. I haven't trained that. So my body didn't absorb uh, the asphalt when I when I dropped down I I was in a more stiff position and it, I boy it let me know all the way up my knees and my back when I did it and I went oh shit and that was a an awakening for me that you know it, this happens at one point in our lives where we just stop doing th certain things and we lose the ability yeah, yeah and that's just to make us more efficient and effective with our energy and what we're doing like our body just recognizes what our biggest you know patterns are every day and and you know how to allocate those resources in that direction and so it's like it, it's this pruning system it has already like okay so if we're not doing this let's go ahead and shuttle that you know attention in this direction cuz you're doing this more frequently yeah, your your body is always trying to get just as good as it needs to get. It's never going to try to aim to exceed what it believes to be the the bare minimums. And how does it determine the bare minimums? Well, off of your activity and the signals uh, that you send your body. Now, why, right? Why won't your body get stronger than the bare minimum that it thinks it needs? Or why won't it get the ag more agility than the bare minimum that it thinks it needs? Because all of those require energy, just like Justin said, and our bodies evolved for the most part uh, during you know long for most of human history. Uh, energy was hard to come by; it was scarce. It made no sense. If your body became inefficient, you starved. It made no sense whatsoever. So, your body is not going to be good at jumping if you don't jump. If you don't ever jump, you lose that ability. Your body's like, we don't need this. We don't need this skill. Let's get rid of this and become more efficient. If you don't run, you'll lose that skill. If you don't ride your bike, you'll lose that skill. If you don't lift weights, you start to lose strength. This is true for any anything at all, even your, your ability to handle stress, to deal. You know, it's funny. I grew up in a, a loud house. It was relatively chaotic um, at, at times. You know, big family, loud, you know, you know stereotypical Italian people. And I, you know, growing up, I was like, this is just what, the way I live. It's not a big deal. Like, you know, if I needed to do homework or do something or whatever, it didn't bother me. I didn't even notice it. Moved out, um, and then I lived in a quiet environment, lived by myself for a long time. Then I'd go home, and I'd be like, I can't handle all this, <laughs> this noise <laughs> all of a sudden. Stimulus. Yeah, it's just it's just like anything. Like your ability to handle temperature, um, absolutely. So if you want to maintain abilities, you have to practice them. There's absolutely nothing, and this is this is what this is a very important lesson for people. It's like, oftentimes we do the stuff that's needed to get us better, but then we forget that whatever we did to get there is what we need to do to stay there.
Mm-hmm. It doesn't stay. Your body never stays. It only adapts. And so you want to, this. And when we first, you know, this this is one of the oldest fitness sayings. It's been around forever. It became a parody for a long time. You don't use it, you lose it. You know, yeah. I think it's been around since the maybe the seventies and eighties. But it, there's, it's almost the most true, famous fitness saying. I can't think of one. No pain, no gain is the other one. That one's a lot of that's false. Mm-hmm. But you you don't use it, you lose it. Totally true. And you could take this to the extreme. You could literally. Uh, put your leg in a cast. N- don't use it, and you know, do that for a year, and watch what your body does to your leg. It starts to get rid of it. Yeah. It's crazy. So, absolutely, if you want something, you gotta you gotta maintain it, and you gotta maintain that practice. Otherwise, your body will just get rid of it. Next question is from Jackie Martinez, 1983. What is a bubble in any industry you feel will be bursting soon? Mm, that's a good question. Any industry. Well, I'll stick to the fitness space uh, because I see this happening in the fitness space, although I also see this happening just generally in the uh, the, the social media space. So, um, mm. And that's these mastermind groups. This is where you pay a lot of money for access to somebody who has large influence, and then they bring you into their training course and with other people willing to spend a lot of money. And the goal is to teach you how to do what they did and part of what they're teaching you is to how to run your own mastermind course teaching other people and so it's like this it's like the this MLM type yeah. of structure which uh you know if you just follow it down it's the line is if eventually it's going to burst because you know how many people are going to be teaching people to make these courses to make money you know i don't know if i agree with you because and i and i think i did at one point i i go back and forth on this and I was talking to somebody over the last weekend about mastermind groups and they're kind of like uh, fraternities for adults, business adults. So it's turned it like you, you, you kind of, you pay to get in and you, and you get access to all these people and they're, they're fun. They're exciting. They're full of motivation and hype. You and, have dinners. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the part that I think any even anybody who's been a part of a fraternity, whether you liked it or you didn't like it, the probably the one of the most beneficial things that most people would agree about uh, fraternities and sororities is the lifelong connections that you make, uh, especially with business. I look at like my girl's business, for example, the company she works for, and you know the uh, if you went to at least half of the uh, people that work in the office mm-hmm. are uh, old or came from Bellarmine. They all came up from the same school and, and know each other. And, mm-hmm. you know, and the person who owns it came from Bellarmine. So he gave lots of them jobs. And so there's kind of this fraternity aspect of it that I think some people, that's enough value for them. And so they justify spending 30, some 50, $100,000 a year on these mentors. And the other thing is the the mentorship part. Like uh, the, there's a big uh, push on the agenda that everybody needs to have a mentor, which I agree. I think it's important to have mentors and have people that uh, that you look up to and aspire to be like, and it can help guide you in your, your business life and potentially your personal life. And so I think that because of that, I don't know if they will die. I'm not a fan of them like like you. I was also not a fan of a fraternity. Like um, I used to make fun of my best friend who yeah. was in a fraternity the whole time that he had to buy his friends. And I'm somebody who if they tell you to eat the biscuit. Don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh God. God. Yeah. Does it but, cost money to get into a fraternity too? Uh, yeah, the fraternities yeah. cost money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have dues, I think. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So mm-hmm. it's it's similar, right? And and so I think it's. I think for some people, they they do find enough value in it. I think the reason why we all feel that way is because it's so not us. Mm. And so I'm very careful to be like, ah, it's going to die, especially something like that that's been around for as long as it's been around. Well, here's here's how I define as bursting. Okay. I don't, bursting doesn't mean it's going to go away. Bursting just means it's not going to be, it's going to grow in the market and then it's going to pop. And then there's still going to be a small amount of it, but it's not going to be like it used to be. Uh, the whole, you know, join my mastermind so we can learn how to use social media to maximize our business. Here's a couple of reasons why that's going to burst, in my opinion. One, essentially, eventually, when you follow it down the line, there's only, it's like writing a book on how to make money writing books. Eventually, everybody does that mm-hmm. and then there's nothing left. And lots of people get no value out of it. There's a, this very, the, most, the majority of people who go to mastermind groups get nothing out of it, but they tell themselves they did uh, to make themselves feel better, but they don't go back. The second reason is because making money through hacking 
social media without prevent providing any real substance and value, those days are numbered. The algorithms are changing. You're not getting as much as much access. People, you, you can have a million. It used to be if you had hundreds of thousands of followers, you could easily turn that into, you you know, lots of money because you would put out a post or whatever. You'd reach them all. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all these, they're changing the point where you put out something to your 100,000 followers, very small percentage of people see them. And the only people that are getting traction are the ones that really are providing already lots of value. They're getting lots of interaction. And so the old rules apply. And the, and the third reason why I think masterminds are going to pop is because a lot of the message that they're selling is, 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 are not the fundamentals that you know, building successful business are built on. The fundamentals of a successful business are hard work, time, present lots of value to your customers. Masterminds are kind of, the, the ones I've seen are all yeah. about hacking the system, this is what you do, you well, do this to, that. To the, what you're bringing up, I, I see it from the standpoint of what they've already sort of uh, cracked down on with influencers and how you've seen them lose value and lose authority uh, over the last year or so has really been like quite dramatic in how they're like changing their algorithms because like their true engagement really isn't even there. It's just, it's purely like a numbers thing that they've aggregated, uh, you know, through bots or, you know, however, however they've done it, uh, you know, their true authentic, authentic version isn't being portrayed. And so companies that are trying to invest in them that like, they're not seeing any return. And so it's like the money is moving away from that, that whole industry. Yeah. Uh, so I do see that affecting, you know, because a lot of the the mastermind was was you know centered around some of these influential people who you know looked like they had a lot of power. But yeah, because the model is like get some followers, and then your most hardcore followers, you sell them a huge ticket item to be part of your mastermind. That's the 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 model right now to make money uh, through social media influence. I can't see how that's a, a model that's going to continue to, you know, be as popular as it is. I, I'm sure it'll always exist, but I can't see how that's going to it's going to maintain its, well, know, its growth. I, yeah, I think it's going to continue to go on. I don't. Th I think that the 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 rate at Instagram's growth and and Twitter and YouTube and the growth of those companies will continue to drop new people that come in that fall into the same traps and do the same thing over and over. I don't think that it's going to slow down anytime soon. And if it does, it won't be significant, significant enough to call it a pop. I think it, it's here to stay. Yeah, some of the characteristics of bubbles are um, they, they come out of nowhere mm -hmm. and people start making a lot of money but aren't really providing a lot of value. Well, that's also a characteristic of a business that's successful too. Yeah, uh, comes out of nowhere, great timing, but not provide, But not providing a lot of value well, is how bubbles burst. Yeah. So you look at the house market, you know, housing market took, everybody was making money. It was to get a loan. You literally just told them how much money you made. You look at that and be like, well, this this isn't going to maintain itself. It can't possibly maintain itself. Well, you're, you're, you're drawing parallels to things that are not common at all. I mean, housing market has nothing to do with the way people are influenced with emotion and the insecurities they have with their bodies and all the other things that are manipulated and used in social media. Those are apples and oranges. Yeah, you're, but you're, again, you're, comparing. You're, 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 you're dealing with people who are asking them to spend thousands of dollars for this kind of access. All it takes is one per, one person to figure out that if they give this away for you know 50 bucks, they take the, they take it away from every it's a it's a vulnerable industry that is providing very little real value, which is why I think it's that it's that that's what's going to happen. I'm not a hater. Yeah. If I see something providing lots of but if your value is this and you keep doing this well, and other people well, do it, I also see well I mean I I know that there's a lot of value in CBD and the, like like high quality CBD and things, like, but I I could totally see that whole industry having a massive burst. That's a good one too. I would yeah. absolutely. I could get on board with that That's more so, more so than the mastermind one. I definitely CBD will it's uh, definitely got to peak soon and then come back down sooner or later. Yeah, uh, people are going to be like, okay, it's uh, it's not for everybody. There's a there's a, a population yeah. of people this does a, a, a amazing things for, and the rest of the people, it's kind of a waste of a money, a waste of money. So I definitely think uh, that's true, and I think along the lines of things that you said, Sal, that I do agree with that, that are going to change, and I, I think it kind of plays into your idea of the mastermind thing blowing up, and that is. The people that are running those masterminds and and doing those are are is going to shift and change. 
right now it's allowed these you know fitness models who got popular off of their bodies and on Instagram to take advantage of the quarter million, a half million, a million people following them by organizing these groups that pay them money and they basically try. So I, I do believe that, like, and we're already seeing this right now. I mean, these, and, and what percentage of these mastermind groups is being run by people like that? Not that much. You in don't our, think so? No, I think in, again, now you talk about our bubble that we live in. Yeah, it seems like a, a high majority of them because that's my world and your world and that's what we mm. see all the time. And so we're like, oh my God, must be everybody. Well, no, there's tons of masterminds and and groups like that that have been going on long before Instagram models got we just see them taking advantage of it and what I like to think is as they start to fall off and this new breed of people that come up that actually are adding great value that have great pages that lots of people are paying attention to and following it'll open the door for those people to do those types of mastermind groups and they will actually be adding more value than some of these models that's why I don't think the bubble burst but I think you'll see a changing of the guard on the type of people there, that there will just be. isn't an, enough people who pro can provide real value who also are want to make money doing that. Like if you see someone who's providing a lot of value with their business, making tons of money doing it, they're probably not going to think to themselves, "Hey, I'm going to also do this expensive mastermind." What I see going on right now is a lot of these people have no. This is how they make their money. And they really don't have a successful business without it. And I don't see a lot of value. And so, I, again, I think it's going to exist. I just don't think it's going to be so many. There's so mm -hmm. many that are, that are out there, and it keeps growing. Have no you way. guys heard of uh, like Reiki and, and body design? No. Or anything like that? Okay, so uh, this was brought to my attention by multiple people that, uh, like, in especially down in LA, like, this is a big thing. Like, where it, they've even, like, uh, basically like compared it to actors like you know how they always like end up like being a a, a waiter or like you know having like sort of a part-time job that they're kind of like hanging around like the new thing now is like like energy working and like doing all this like spiritualism yeah. stuff oh you said reiki reiki, reiki. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so but it's huge like yeah. like it, that's like the the if i can't make it in entertainment or being I, i'm doing that yeah. you know and like <laughs> that that's like pervading the entire area and it's like making its way up here and i'm like what it, what are they talking about? I'm an intuitive. The fuck is an intuitive? <laughs> yeah, it's a thing now. So I'm I'm like I'm keeping my eye on it. But uh, apparently they're they're saying like it's it's growing and like that's something else. Where I'm just like okay, I smell some BS. Well, speaking of things busting, uh, bubbles busting. Have you uh, the the stock market? We've had the longest bull market ever, ever. The last ten years has been a massive bull market in the stock market, and it's today it's still hitting record highs now it's scary yeah historically speaking <laughs> scary, this bro. means there's gonna oh, yeah. be a big fall, climbing climbing a climbing. big fall oh, yeah. you know that's gonna hit like uh remember the roaring 20s uh you know where, the, where the, it seemed that way it was like any, everybody could make money everybody was yeah. in the great depression and then we had the great depression and it was yeah. this is following you know 2008 after 2008 crash right on 2009 10 it grew and grew and grew and overall i don't know what the numbers are i was just reading an article this morning about it, and they're like, this is the, the longest running bull market ever. Oy. So maybe the next know, bubble to pop is going to be the, yeah. the stock market, which is kind of scary. Uh, we'll see what scary. happens there. Anyway, look, you can go to mindpumpfree.com and you can download all of our books and guides for free. We've got a lot of information there that costs nothing. Great resources. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.